Hi, I'm Kent. In this video, I'm going to start putting on the electrical components to my kiln. Right now, it is bare. The only thing that electrical inside this kiln right now are the elements, which I left. But there are no high voltage power to control it, nor is there anything to actually control the temperature of the kiln. In this video, I'm going to be covering high voltage electrical circuits. If you're not comfortable with this, don't do it yourself. I'll get someone who really knows what they're doing. This is also not advice or recommended practice in any way. This is just me rebuilding my kiln. The first thing I'm going to tackle is the thermocouple. So this here is the hole for the original kiln sitter. The kiln sitter used to sit here and there was a lever that came out that actually went through this hole. In the last video, I took a piece of the ceramic fire brick and cut it down to make the hole smaller so that I can actually fit the thermocouple. So here is the thermocouple. It is a K type thermocouple. I have a thermocouple block to attach it to. So the lead goes out through these ceramic pieces here to the end. The end here is where the two dissimilar metals are connected and that's how it reads the temperature and the other leg comes back. One of the important things to know is to get the positive and negative leads right. On a K-type thermocouple, the red lead is supposed to be the negative and the other is the positive. It turns out that the red lead uh, is actually magnetic. So if I could take a magnet, I can actually attach it. And so if I didn't have these markings, I know that this would be the negative lead. The other one doesn't hold the magnet, it's not ferrous at all. So this is the negative and I've then attached it to the negative side marked on the thermocouple block. So the next thing to do now is to mount the block onto the kiln. I don't want to screw it directly to the outside of the kiln though, it would stick too far in. So I'm going to reuse one of the pieces that was part of the kiln sitter. Here is the mounting plate for the kiln sitter. I've enlarged the hole slightly um, so that I can pass the thermocouple through in the right spot, it's not centered. And I've added uh, two small holes so I can screw down this block. So I'm going to attach this plate and then I will insert the thermocouple. So now I'm going to pass the thermocouple through the hole and then mount the mounting block onto this piece of sheet metal. The piece of brick I put in there to close down the hole isn't cemented in, so I actually need to hold it from the inside so it doesn't get pushed through. And there's the thermocouple. The thermocouple is in place, the mounting block is in place. This will give me a place to attach the thermocouple wire that I can then hook up to the sensor to read the temperature. Next, I'm going to start working on connecting up the elements. I'm going to work from the elements out. So each ring has a pair of elements. This here is one element where the power goes in one leg and comes out the other. Here's the other element. And the bottom ring also has a pair of elements. This is one, and this is another element. When I took apart the kiln, I noticed there were different connectors. Um, so these have a nice screw on connector, so it should be really easy to connect a wire to this. These were crimped on. So what I wound up doing was actually just cutting the wire and leaving a little bit of the original wire exposed. What I'll do is I'll actually crimp onto this wire as opposed to on the element. I don't want to break the elements. So to connect everything up, I bought some high voltage wire. This will need to connect from the elements to the relays that I'm going to put somewhere in the kiln. I'm not exactly sure where yet. I'm going to leave all of the leads relatively long. I can then trim them later if I need to. The scut kilns use one relay per ring and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to use one relay to turn both of these elements on and off and one relay to turn both of these elements on and off. That means these will be wired in parallel. So the power will be coming in to one lead and exiting. It actually doesn't matter what the order is in terms of power coming in one or the other. I just want to make sure that I have power coming into both. Since the elements are just big resistors, there really is no directionality in terms of power going in and out. There's no positive or negative. So as long as I wire this one in parallel to this one, that it should work. So I think that what that means is I'm going to make some short jumpers from here to here and here to here. So I only have one set of high temperature wires coming in to feed the kiln. I'll then do the same thing on the bottom. Here's some wire that I can use to go from the top to the bottom and connect those. Since the top has these screw-on terminals, I'm going to use these ring, ring connectors. What seems to work to remove this fiberglass sheathing is to take a utility knife and score 
along since it's braided around the outside edge. So now the sheathing's been removed, but I need to cut off the insulation as well. For that, a regular wire stripper seems to work. Okay, so I've taken a piece of wire and stripped both ends. So there's the crimp on connector, the ring that goes on. And then I crimp that down. Okay, here's the wire with the terminals. So there's one, I need to make a second one. So I need to wire these elements in parallel, which means I need one wire connecting these terminals, and then there'll be a wire going out to the relay, and another wire connecting these terminals. So now we have one end of both elements connected together and the other end of both elements connected together. So these are in parallel. I don't have any power coming in, so I didn't cinch these down yet. We'll need to add more wires coming in to be able to power these. So now this ring here is wired up just like the kiln in this diagram. The top element here is jumpered to the bottom element. So the top element here is jumpered to the bottom element. So they're in parallel, which will then be fed by one of the relays. Next, I need leads that go from the elements to the relays. Since I don't know exactly where I'm going to put the relays yet, I'm going to make these wires relatively long and I can trim them later. So now I've added ring terminals to one end of the wire and I've stripped the other end. The ring terminals will be able to go on to the elements here. The other ends need to connect to the relay. The relay has these spade terminals, so I'll need to put a spade connector onto this end of the wire. All right, two rings and two spades. So I can attach one side there and the other side there. So on the one screw, I will put the power coming in and the jumper that goes to the other element. All right, so the high voltage for the first relay is wired up. So what will happen is one leg of the two 40 volts will be connected here, and the other one will be connected here. 240 volts goes, flows down the wire, goes to this element, will sneak through the element and come back out here. In the first element, I also jump up to the second element so the power can go sneak through the element and come back, and then go here. The second wire then comes back and connects to the other line of the relay. So when the relay is closed, power will throw through both elements in parallel, and when it's open, it won't flow at all. With the top done, I need to do the same thing to the bottom. I'll wire them in parallel, so I'll create a jumper going from one leg of the element to the other, and then I'll have wire coming back out to go to the relay. The big difference is these were crimped on, so I can't use these screw terminals. Instead, I need to use these crimp on ferrules, so I'll crimp wire on both ends. So I'll crimp on to the little bit of wire left here, and I'll then crimp the other side to, to new wire to make the connections. Okay, I put ferrules on each ends of the elements right now sticking out. Next, we'll be putting the high voltage wire. This will be a little bit more tricky since I need to do both the jumper and the lead coming out at the same time. Okay, that was not easy, but I got a pair of wires crimped into each ferrule. Now I can take the other ends attached to the bottom. Okay, the wires are all crimped on just like above. And the last thing will be attached to the relay just like before. Great, now we have two relays, one to control the top section, and one to control the bottom section. So now that I have the wires connected down to the elements, I need to connect the high voltage into the relays. To do that, I'm gonna run power from my cord into a terminal block, 
and then from the terminal block to the relays. I'm still not exactly sure where I'm going to mount this permanently onto my kiln. So I found a scrap piece of sheet metal that I'm going to mount things onto, and then I can move that around as needed. So now I'm mounting the relays. I think I want to keep the high voltage components next to the terminal block, and then the control lines facing away. more nuts, I'll tighten those down as well. To connect the terminals of the relay to the terminal block, off camera I made up some pigtails. These are 14 gauge wires, so I actually doubled them up, and I'll install them next. Similar to the top elements of my kiln, one side needs to connect to the relay, so that's a spade. The other one is a ring, so it can actually screw down. So there's one leg. All right, one more step. So now we go from the elements of these wires through the relay, and then from the relay, one leg goes to one side of the terminal block, the other side goes to the other side of the terminal block. The next part of the high voltage system is to connect up these leads. So this is the neutral lead. I'm not actually going to use this right now. Uh, the ground is good. I'll need that. And then I will need the two 240 volt lines. Since I'm not using the neutral right now, I'll just wrap that up with some Kapton tape. So I'll connect these to the posts. All right, here it is all wired up. I've covered the neutral and capton tape and taped it back since I'm not going to be using that for right now. One of the 240 volt lines goes to this side of the terminal block. The other side goes to this side of the terminal block. I've connected the ground to the base plate here. From the terminal block, we come up to one side of the relay. Same for the other, to one side of the relay. The other side of the terminal block comes up to the other side of the relay, and that goes down to the kiln. I can now put these covers on. All right, so this is all the high voltage components. I'm still missing the signal to turn the relays on and off. And before I test any of this, I'm going to pull up my multimeter and make sure everything's connected and I don't have any shorts. As always, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thanks.